I mean, it's very hard. Like somebody like R. Kelly, you know, obviously mm -hmm. that's something I don't think we need to hear from again. No, but I want to no. see that if you do make a mistake, that you're taking the steps and the actions to show growth. Okay. That mm -hmm. you've learned. Of course. You know what I mean? It, it, not right in the room, but at least, just saying you're sorry doesn't always cut it for me. Welcome to the zoo. We have an amazing show for you today. We got an all-star cast. We have our girl, A.K. Lopez, and a new cast member joining us. We have Ellie Vasquez. What's hey. up, Ellie? What's up, y'all? Thank you so much for having me. I feel so blessed to be in this space with y'all, ready to chop it up and have a good old time. So yeah, let's get into well, it. Well, we're excited that you're here. Yep. A.K., fresh blood. I mean, what should we know about you? Uh, like piranhas, fresh blood. I, I'm Talk about it. I know, What's your social security number? <laughs> I'm Mexican. Oh. I'm a cancer. I like chicken wings. I don't know. Like that's that's that that's sums me standard. up. That's, that's good, pretty yeah. standard. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're gonna fit in perfectly here because we love all those things, guys. <laughs> today we are talking about online censorship in the online space, and that is today's big deal. <laughs> All right, guys, so everybody knows about the Joe Rogan controversy that's going on. People are, you know, want him canceled. Right. He had doctors on his show mm -hmm. that were, you know, not necessarily for the vaccine. I want both of your takes. What do you feel about online censorship? <sighs> okay, this is a hard thing. Like, I watched the Joe Rogan podcast. I've watched it for years. Okay. And this is the thing with Joe is that I see where every, why everyone's upset. And there is some mis misinformation. This man has views for days. I think he has more views than a lot of like news publications now. Okay. So when you have certain experts that are saying things that may not totally be right, there's some repercussions, especially nowadays. But also, I don't know, man. Like he he is able. To the thing about the media is that like he's it, like different people can start any podcast and create anything they want. Uh, and with Joe, he's able to bring on a bunch of different cool people, even on the opposite side. So it's hard to just go straight to censorship. Like you got to really know the product and really know what you're looking at. It's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's Wait, a tough so one. Wait, so actually, because you've listened to Joe Rogan for many years, yes. I've, I haven't, you know, yeah. so I hear the scandal, I'm like, okay, cool, it's like on the paper, right? Yeah. So what's your experience with him? Is he the type to kind of give misinformation? Or the thing is, he's a, I think he people pushes are pushes boundaries. The thing is, I think we're forgetting, is that he's a pothead comedian who started a <laughs> podcast that got really popular. And he's a cool dude. He's able to change his opinions. But he brings everyone in, like okay. like crazy people like Alex Jones. Like I am not gonna fall for Alex Jones because he thinks lizard people are real. I'm not about that. <laughs> but also he brings in people like Bernie Sanders, who isn't getting a lot of like in 2016 wasn't getting a lot of uh, publication, mm -hmm. a lot a lot of uh, airtime. So he's been able to find these people in every corner of the world, which okay. has been interesting for me. But it does take a certain responsibility of the viewer to know. But if some people don't know, they could be easily influenced. Right. So that's the debate. And I don't really listen to him either, obviously, being a stand-up, I'm aware. But I'm not well, looking is, yeah. to Joe Rogan for medical advice he, from the host of Survivor. Yes. If I need medical <laughs> advice, I'm going to the CDC. That's where we need to look. Right. I mean, what do you feel about online censorship? Like, do you feel like we've gone too far with the canceling? Do you think it's necessary? What are the terms that it's okay by you? Um, I think we have gone a little too far with canceling because everyone's allowed to make a mistake and not everyone's, like, not everyone is born with mm -hmm. a certain degree of like PC or whatever, you know? Um, I think I do agree with the whole Joe Rogan thing. It's like, as, as a listener, you have to always criticize what mm -hmm. you're hearing, you know? Even reading a book, an academic book, like why am I reading this, you know? Um, I think we have gone a little overboard. This might, maybe this is where like we do the podcast censorship. Like, you know how uh, we have like explicit, what is it, that little? Oh, the E, the little E thing. At yeah, the for, um, yeah, like yeah. for albums. Maybe this is the whole war that we had in the early 90s with like explicit lyrics and all that. Maybe we need one of those for podcasts, you know? Yeah. Beware, yeah. this is not like an NPR, you know? Like a disclaimer. Claimer. Academic, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is not the source for that, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, and you know, my take on it is that I, you can, you have to take everything from where it comes. Truthfully, you know what yeah. I mean. And I mean, whether you believe it, in the vaccine or not, let me just say, if you eat it in an Arby's, <laughs> you put worse things in your butt. That's all that I'm saying. You know. But yeah. with me, I think that as a comedian, you know, you, you're both fantastic digital creators. Do you ever get nervous, put anything out and be like, oh my God, could this be the thing that gets me canceled? Ah, man, yeah, because you, you never know how people are going to react to it. Like, everyone's going to have a problem. Like, if I feel like there's always like eyeballs on me, like, 
are you engaging in this current something that's happening in the world? Well, why aren't you? And then you do, and they're like, well, actually, you probably shouldn't do that. You're, there's no way you're going to please everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and to what you were saying, like, y'all, like, if you looked at your old tweets, your old Facebook right, posts right. from, like, 2000s, we've all kind of said something that was a little, like, eh, but you have to learn and do better. That's the thing. I think it's, it is that fear of just being instantly judged. Um, we don't have enough of a culture where it's like, okay, that was wrong, but here's how you can do better and acknowledge it right, and keep right, it moving. Right. But yeah, it is something in the back of your head, but like at the end of the day, you gotta know you ain't gonna please everybody. Do you think Joe Rogan is gonna learn and do better? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's a pothead comedian. I don't know. He already yeah. forgot what we're talking about. Right. No. Right. But what I think is so interesting is that Spotify signed a hundred million dollar deal, and if they were to break the contract, it financially. You oh, know, are they trying to toss him? No, that's what people wanted to do, but they wouldn't because they are not going to break the contract and, right. and shell, it, shell it all out. Yeah. But I think that it mm. was very interesting to see all the musicians taking their music now off Spotify. Yeah. And I think that's certainly a power move, especially yeah. if you listen to wow. Apple Music. That's, I mean, what do you guys think of that? Man, taking music off the platform. Yeah, Neil Young with uh, what, his Free World song, and uh, he takes it off because of uh, it's not, we're not censoring people enough. It's kind of ironic. I don't know, uh, but it, it is it is interesting where like that is the power move. My big thing is like I'm just scared of. Okay, there's reasons to do it. I'm validating that, but like I just don't want it to be like this is like anyone could be taken down over something that isn't agreeable. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really difficult. I'm, I don't know. It's it's up in the air. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just add a censorship tag to it. You know, let the yes. audience know, like yeah. at your discretion. This Everything may ruffle is your feathers. Your yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. P for pothead, C for comedian. <laughs> like have these letters and in place. And for like, nonsense. And yeah. for nonsense. Know what you're getting into. Like you were saying, we eat Taco Bell. We know it's not good for us, but we're gonna eat it anyway and deal with it in the morning right, afterwards right, after right. a cup right. of coffee. Like we make our decisions. Right. You know, it's you like, get I don't your know. plunger and you make do. <laughs> well, we are keeping this conversation rolling. Juicy. Don't go anywhere. Keep it locked on the zoo. <laughs> Welcome back to the zoo. Ooh. I mean, we are hot in the conversation <laughs> about online censorship. Steaming. And you know, after Joe Rogan's whole thing with you know vaccinations and the anti-vaxxers, there was an update, um, you know, that came out that there was a compilation released of Joe Rogan saying the you know N word, which is never acceptable Ooh. to say. You know, um, and some people think that this is something that the media has been holding on to, and mm. waiting for the right time. Well, first of all, how do you both feel about that? I, I didn't know about this. This is the first time hearing of that. So, I mean, obviously not acceptable, right? Well, I did hear about it. And as an Afro-Latino, here's my hot takes yes. of this whole compilation. Uh, again, I will say I am Afro-Latino, but I do not represent every person in the community's thoughts on this. Uh, I grew speaking up watching- Speaking of disclaimers. <laughs> speaking of disclaimers, I am content creator. Uh, you know, uh, no, uh, I would say, you know, I've been, yeah, I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast through the years. I watch UFC. He's like a part of the mixed martial arts community. I grew up on that. And he has a well, big group of diverse friends, like mm -hmm. black people, brown people, everyone across the board. And I have white friends that say some ignorant stuff sometimes and I have to check them. And the thing is, it says a lot if they do better or not. Right. And with Joe has been saying it through the years, he has diverse friends. I know he has been checked at least once. The fact that through the years he has not change that about himself and he apologized he came out with the video apologizing but um that says a lot okay. so am i completely writing this person off that i've been aware of as, as someone in the media for that many years not necessarily no i will listen to his apology and see how he changes though but he had room to grow through the years and that is my red flag for you joe do better, Joe. Come on. And, and that's the thing. I don't know if you feel this way. You know, uh, canceling, I, I really think it depends on, like, what you do. And I'm not giving certain people passes, but I think I need to know the severity of what you do, because I don't think, I, I mean, it's very hard. Like, somebody like R. Kelly, you know, obviously mm. that's something I don't think we need to hear from again. No, but I want to no. see that if you do make a mistake, that you're taking the steps and the actions to show growth. Okay. That mm -hmm. you've learned. Of course. You know what I mean? It, it's not writing the wrong, but at least just saying you're sorry doesn't always cut it for me. So yeah. do we know, like, it, it, is this compil compilation like of times he said it in the past yeah. or like the most recent? I, 
think it was a present. It was oh. through all throughout the year. Yeah. So you could see based off his hairline, like how the years <laughs> went. So like he had a full head of hair That's all the way to balding <laughs> and old. Look for so the hairline. this has been recent. And okay. his, his thing was like, okay, it was taken out of context. It is wrong. I shouldn't have said it in that way. So I you apologized and then said it again? He didn't say it on the, the apology okay, video, okay. but he was like, you know, I shouldn't have done that. It looks bad. It looks cringy. The way I was saying it was in the context of conversation, or I was talking to black people while I was saying it. The way it was edited and created, it, it was like a smear on me, like someone went through my 12 years of episodes That's to crazy. find those moments, which, again, he did say it. But I think it does says a lot about a, who is that person in the interwebs Just that waiting. did the work to find, like waiting the, in the, the tall grass. Listen, there's a lot of people, the pandemic is still going on. A lot of people don't have jobs, and they have a lot of time <laughs> to sit home and put together these you know, compilations on Final Cut Pro. So you better be acting accordingly. You know, as a comedian who it does, you know, I, I have a brother with special needs. I talk about him a lot. Sometimes people get upset that I talk mm. about things like that. For me, in terms of, you know, the, the prism of comedy, I think what it really comes down to is intent. The mm. intent behind what you're saying. Is it, you could say something without being malicious or hurtful uh -huh. and still mm. make joke or shine a light on things. So mm. I, when I, whenever I hear somebody, you know, is, gets in trouble for something, I was like, what's the intent behind what they say? Yeah. Definitely. I think that I try to come from a place of love, mostly. I mean, I'm not bashing anyone on my like social media or anything like that. I'm bashing myself, actually. I will take, I will sink so you can rise, you know? Um, Very noble. <laughs> you're, welcome. you're welcome, you're <laughs> welcome. Um, but no, I feel like the biggest thing for me is like, I switch between English and Spanish a lot. So sometimes when I'm typing or I'm saying something, I'll be like, oh my God, I sound so stupid. I didn't say this correctly or I said it in this way. Mm. So I feel like that for me is a personal insecurity. Mm. And so YouTube comments, our bottom of the barrel comments, you know? <laughs> but I happen to go on them, and one of them will be like horrible interviews. You're talking English or Spanish, and I'm like, damn. About people, you? Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, people really are. Okay, those people like, should be canceled. To talk about, yeah. Well, we want haters though. That's good. I want haters. Okay. okay? Look at Cardi B's Instagram. You see through her comments, uh -huh. it is a fight on those Instagram comments. It really Instagram is comments. a fight. Yeah. That's success. <laughs> I want to I want to rile people up. It's like uh, what is the, uh, the freaking NWA like they uh, were breaking up the records and stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, they still bought the records even if they right, broke it. So right, right, right. Haters, haters, haters good, still fame. Like, sometimes it's nice to see somebody hating on you and then you pull up who they are and you're right. like, oh, I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Have you done that? You, oh, yes, yeah. I have. You, I you said, pulled them up. You, you found the haters? Oh, oh, yes. I'll pull up everything. And I said, this is actually no reason for me to be upset You have at a whole all. FBI case. And, it's uh, just like, mm. and, and that's right. You know, but in terms of canceling, like, I don't think that we should embrace that you could just completely, once again, depends on what you did. Right. You know what I mean? But I, I, I would like to see people learning and, and growing rather than just being like, you're completely erased from, Definitely. from the right. world. That's the hard thing of creating content and putting yourself out there online. You're, like, you're, you're, you're open to everyone judging you. And I've gotten every single judgment you could possibly think of. You know, I can't dance salsa and I can't speak Spanish. A lot of hate in the Latino community mm -hmm. on just who I am and who, who I, what I'm about. So it's like you want to be authentic to yourself, but also you're struggling with the back and forth of, you know, not just being like everybody else and playing it too safe. So there yeah. is this rough middle, middle ground risque. in the digital space. Yeah, so it's anyone acceptable. can get canceled. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. So talk to us a little bit more about you. You're also a comedian? Uh, I wouldn't say a comedian. Okay. I like to think I'm a pretty it's funny short. guy. I don't know. But uh, you know, I, I come from the digital world. Okay. You know, I did a lot of work with uh, Better Like at, at BuzzFeed mm -hmm. as a content creator, creating digital content. i um, also a filmmaker as well. Nice. So I'm in these digital streets, y'all. So like, you're out me. there. I'm out there. I'm doing the thing. And now you're on the zoo. Right. And now the zoo. What would I like to be? Oh, the zoo. Could you give us an animal sound? sound? Because we're really trying to do animal sound. We did do that. At the, we did that. Yeah. We did. We're you trying didn't to, do the animal sound. It's an initiation. Actually. It's an initiation. I was an emu. On uh, past episodes. This isn't a thing. This no, isn't it is. A thing. We really, we're we really, really did really it. Trying okay. to get a pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, listen, all we could say is if you're getting online and you're adding into the online ecosystem, be conscious of what you say. Don't be stupid. You know, words do have impacts and be smart. That's really, I think, that's what I hope mm -hmm. the children of tomorrow take away. On their TikTok, throwing up, the flipping the bird. The children of tomorrow. The children this of tomorrow. This message is for you. Who are watching. <laughs>